SpaceX is known for lighting up the sky almost twice a week with rocket launches, and naturally that's what most people talk about. To be fair, launching a rocket is incredibly difficult, and the company deserves every bit of praise they get for it. But what often gets overlooked is something far more impressive, the engines behind those rockets. SpaceX is one of the very few companies on Earth that builds its engines entirely in-house, from the first bolt to the final test fire. That level of vertical integration is extremely rare in this industry. Most launch companies don't want to touch engine development at all. It's expensive, risky, and one mistake can destroy years of work. Companies like ULA spent over a decade relying on engines built by others, including the RD-180 from Russia and the BE-4 from Blue Origin. Buying engines is the safe option. SpaceX didn't take that route. They chose the hard path. They designed Merlin on their own. They created the full-flow, staged combustion cycle Raptor on their own. And they've been evolving it aggressively with each generation. That brings us to the latest development, something Musk recently hinted at that caught everyone's attention. The Raptor 4. Without making big announcements or glossy presentations, Musk revealed that Raptor 4 is already designed and in development. What makes this interesting isn't just the name Raptor 4, but what he said about its cost and performance. According to him, the engine will deliver more thrust, better efficiency, and most shocking of all, will be more than 10 times cheaper per ton of thrust than SpaceX's own Merlin engine. That's insane considering Merlin is already one of the cheapest and most proven orbital engines ever built. To understand how big that jump is, you have to compare the evolution of the Raptors. Raptor 1 was the first version tested on early Starship prototypes in Boca Chica. It worked, but it was overweight, complicated, and extremely hard to manufacture. Raptor 2 fixed many of those problems. Its plumbing layout was simplified, it became more compact, and the thrust increased to around approximately 230 tons. The engine also became far more reliable. Raptor 3 took another major leap. It reduced weight again, pushed chamber pressure into the 350 bar range, and increased thrust significantly. SpaceX even removed the heat shield thanks to improved internal cooling channels and a redesigned outer shell. Raptor 3 is also radically easier to build. It used to take SpaceX 11 days to produce a single Raptor 1 with Raptor 2 that dropped to two days, and Raptor 3 brought production down to roughly one day per engine. Now Musk says Raptor 4 will push every metric further. He mentioned thrust levels around 300 to 330 tons, higher specific impulse, better thrust-to-weight ratio, and most importantly, a cost of about $100,000 per ton of thrust. That's a fraction of what other methane engines cost. Blue Origin's BE-4, for comparison, is estimated to cost several million per unit and provides only around 250 tons of thrust. Even Raptor 3, which is already extremely cheap for what it does, cannot match the cost efficiency Musk hinted at for Raptor 4. What makes the drop in cost possible is the massive simplification of the design. Over the years, SpaceX has been eliminating flanges, bolts, and sections that normally require seals. They're moving toward completely welded systems wherever possible. Welded joints are lighter, they don't leak, and they handle vibration better. Each eliminated component reduces mass, removes a possible failure point, and shortens assembly time. This is exactly how SpaceX got Raptor 3 down to roughly 1.525 tons of dry mass, much lighter than Raptor 1, which was nearly 2 tons. With each generation, they're raising chamber pressure, which is critical for increasing performance. Higher chamber pressure means higher exhaust velocity, which means better specific impulse. Raptor 3 already surpasses every operational engine on Earth in this area and Raptor 4 will likely push beyond even that. Musk mentioned a vacuum-specific impulse approaching 380 seconds for the vacuum variant. But Starship itself has to evolve to accommodate these insanely powerful engines. 
Raptor 4 won't simply be swapped into Starship Phi 3 without structural changes. SpaceX is already working on Starship V4, which will feature a redesigned thrust structure, different plumbing routes, updated composite overwrap pressure vessels. The engine mount must be stronger to handle the additional thrust load. The turbo pump in Raptor 4 will deliver more mass flow, which means the feed system on Starship needs to handle higher pressures. SpaceX also builds physical prototypes of new Starship blocks long before they fly. For example, sections of the V3 ship have already been spotted with thicker steel plates and adjusted plumbing for the pressurization system. Ship 39 and Booster 18 are among the first V3 prototypes to use Raptor 3. Once the Raptor 4 program reaches its first test fire stage, SpaceX will likely shift to manufacturing the first V4 prototypes. That's when the real physical adaptations for the new engines will be visible, new thrust plates, new engine skirts, and possibly a new engine arrangement. In terms of current progress, Raptor 3 is being produced at an incredibly fast rate. Dozens of engines have been seen leaving the McGregor test site and heading towards Starbase for integration on boosters and ships. SpaceX has already accumulated more than 6,000 hot fire tests with Raptor 3, totaling over 40,000 seconds of runtime. That's a staggering number for an engine that has existed for less than a year. The timeline for Raptor 4 is becoming clearer. Every Raptor generation has appeared roughly 18 months after the previous one's first flight. Raptor 2 first flew on Starship in 2023. Raptor 3 is expected to fly on the first full Starship 5-3 flight early next year. That puts Raptor 4's first hot fire somewhere around mid-2027 and its first flight test around late 2027 or early 2028. That timeline also lines up neatly with SpaceX's external commitments. NASA's Artemis program expects the first crewed lunar landings using Starship around 2028. To build a sustainable lunar outpost, SpaceX will need a Starship block capable of lifting more mass to the moon. Raptor 4 fits perfectly into that role. Musk also wants the late 2020s to be the period when SpaceX starts deploying early infrastructure on Mars. But all these big plans for Starship and the new Raptor engine are facing one real problem right now. NASA has started warning SpaceX that they might reopen the Lunar Lander program to other companies like Blue Origin. And the excuse NASA gives is honestly hard to take seriously. They say SpaceX is too slow. This would make sense if SpaceX was actually falling behind everyone else. But the reality is the opposite. SpaceX is the only company launching rockets almost twice a week. They launched 96 times in 2023. They passed 120 launches in 2024, and 2025 is already looking even faster. Now compare that to Blue Origin. They had zero orbital launches in those same years. Only a few New Shepard suborbital flights, and even those were delayed for more than a year at one point. So when NASA says SpaceX is slow, it honestly sounds strange. Blue Origin hasn't even flown New Glenn yet. They've been building it for years but not a single orbital test flight has happened. And cost-wise, it's not close either. A Falcon 9 launch costs around $67 million, and even less for internal Starlink missions. Reusable boosters push the price even lower. New Glenn, on the other hand, is expected to cost around $150 to $200 million per launch, and that's if the rocket eventually enters regular service. Blue Origin also spends far more per engine. The BE-4 has gone through multiple redesigns and delays, which slowed down ULA's Vulcan rocket by years. Blue Origin mostly run on Jeff Bezos' personal money. He funds the company each year out of pocket because they don't have a consistent revenue stream yet. This matters because NASA needs a company that can scale up production and fly often. SpaceX is already proving they can do that. Blue Origin is still trying to get to orbit for the first time. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.